In today's video, we're going to go through everything that you need to know about C-stands. Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, my name is Dan Quintero and I'm a commercial photographer based in Sydney and I make videos about anything related to photography. And today we're talking about this guy here, uh, the trusty old C-stand. This is probably, I would say, my most favorite bit of kit in any photography studio. Um, this is like a, like a bit of a Swiss army knife when it comes to photography gear. Now, a lot of people that are not familiar with these uh, will simply sort of write it off as a simple light stand. And they're a very good light stand, uh, but you can't really compare something like this to the traditional type of light stand. This thing can do a lot more than something like that. And we're gonna go through a few of those samples. I've got a few things that I'm gonna mount on this and show you how that works. But let me um, just talk about the components that make up a, uh, a C-stand. So technically speaking, a C-stand is actually just that, just that bit there. But 99% of the time, when people refer to a C-stand, what they're talking about is the stand itself and then this extension arm as well. So the extension arm is made up of two different uh, parts. Okay, you've got the actual knuckle, which is this one here, okay? And so this, I'll just tighten that up. This knuckle here has a mounting hole just through there, okay, with a tightening knob in there. So that sits on what looks like a regular uh, light stand. So this pin over here is exactly uh, the same type of pin that you see on the normal light stand. So then this locks onto the top of the C stand. And then you'll notice, I'll turn this around so you can see, that there are some holes in this knuckle here. So I'll just loosen this up a bit so you can see that. Hopefully you can actually see through the holes there. Um, let's put this down for a second. And you'll notice that, first of all, there's a pin to try and uh, align these holes in there, but you'll also notice that there are different size holes, okay? And, uh, and that's to be able to mount different type of uh, things on there. A lot of the things that you wanna uh, attach onto this will have um, like uh, dowels or rods that you can stick into these holes and then you can use that to tighten it up. There's also uh, this area here so these two things here are called biscuits and you can also mount things in between there as well and just pinch it in there. Uh, so essentially it's just a big clamp. But what we're gonna do is we are going to use the biggest hole in there. So the, the, depending on which brand you get, it'll, um, that will determine how many types of holes you have on here. For the Avengers, which is what I've got here, uh, which is a, comp uh, it's a brand owned by Manfrotto, they will give you uh, three different types of uh, hole sizes. And I think if you buy the Matthews, I think that um, the last time I checked, they were only doing two. But again, that's probably plenty uh, for everyone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this rod here. So we're gonna, this is gonna be, uh, we're gonna need the biggest hole for this. So we're just gonna loosen that up a bit. We find the biggest hole there and we just slide it through there and then we tighten it up. Okay, so that is now tightened. And let's just go through here. And there, and I'll, put, I'll move that there so you can actually see it. It's nice and clear for you. And you'll notice that at the end of this rod here, this is a 40 inch one. You can also get uh, sh um, shorter ones, I think 20 inches. You'll notice that at the end of that, there is another, um, another uh, uh, clamp, just like there is in here uh, as well. And this is what you're going to mount your light to, okay? Or your flag or your um, bounce guards or whatever it is that you want to attach to this, um, uh, to the actual stand itself. So um, the most common type of use uh, for any sort of stand really is would probably have to be a light, okay? So I've got a light there. Now, if you notice on a regular light stand, okay? Just bring that around. You've got this pin here. So this pin here is what you insert the light onto and you just tighten it up 
and, uh, and you're done. So in there, we don't have a pin. So what we do instead is we bring our own pin, okay? So this is a baby pin. And essentially this is exactly the same size as one of those. And we're gonna mount this on one of the holes, okay? So I'll turn this around so you can see. For this one, we're gonna need the larger holes as well. So we're gonna undo this and we're going to tighten that up there. We'll move it up a bit that way. And now what we have is a mounting pin where we can put our light. So the light will go onto that. And you'll notice that the mounting pins have this little step in there. That's a safety mechanism as well, so that if this loosens up, okay, the, the screw will actually catch on that as well, so the light won't fall off. So that is a safety mechanism. So we'll loop, loop that there, and then we'll tighten that up, and then we've got our light. And the great thing about this now is that if I hold on to that light and I loosen this knuckle here, okay, I can now move that light anywhere I want. I can rotate it this way, I can bring it down, I can bring, point it down anywhere I want. Okay, so really, really flexible. So compare this to something like this, where you've only got, let's just undo this and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you now you're only limited to this sort of movement and up and down, okay? So you can't tilt it, you can't extend it forward and so forth. And um, having that arm where you can move things such as lights, uh, even microphones if you want, if you're doing video work, and you can just put this and bring it right onto the spot that you need, okay? It becomes really, really practical. You can have a light, if you wanted to have your light just hanging down, you could just hang, you know, ha hang it down and it'd be completely secure. These knuckles are really, really strong. Now, something to talk about, um, some safety stuff before I actually forget. Um, the way that you mount these is, there is this rule called righty tighty lefty loosey, I think it was called. And what that means is that when you are attaching anything to a C-stand on these knuckles, you want to make sure that when you tighten or when you have your light or whatever it is that you're attaching, let's just say that let's go with the light. When you've got your light here, you always want to make sure that the way that the, 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 the knuckle is set up is that the weight is onto the right of the knuckle as you're facing it, right? To the right of this handle here. The reason for that is that if you've got a light there, if it starts to push down on it, it's naturally pushing in that direction, right? So if, if, you, if it's going down that way, it's pushing in that direction, right? So clockwise. What that's going to do is that if you tighten this, if you push it down on it, it's gonna tighten this even further. If you go in the other way, let me go around this way so you can see this. I could tighten this in this direction, but if the weight is here, then what can happen is as you push this down, it can actually cause, you can see we're actually turning in an anti-clockwise direction. This can actually turn this way and the whole light could come down or whatever you've got on there. So you never, ever, ever have it in this sort of configuration where it's on the left side of the knob. It always wants to be on the right side there, okay? An easy way to set this up is that when you start off, um, you want to stand behind the tallest leg. So this is the tallest leg here. You'll notice that they've got different heights. This is the, 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 the sturdiest leg and we'll go through uh, the, the legs in a second. But what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your knuckle, okay, is, let me just turn this around. You want to make sure that this rod here, the knuckle is parallel to that one leg, okay? It wants to be over that leg. So the, the knuckle itself will be to your right. If you're standing behind the longest leg, okay, so you always, have the longest leg in front of you, you wanna make sure that this knuckle is to your right. If you do that 
and then you bring the weight over the top of the longest leg, you will always have it in the right position, okay? That way, actually, but yeah. Yeah, that way. So that is where you're going to mount your light or whatever it is that you're going to mount. Another thing that I'll say is this. I've seen people mount stuff on that side. So they'll, hold, they'll do something like this. They'll do that. And then they will try to mount the light onto here. Technically speaking, you can do that. It will fit, okay? So you can do that and then your light is there. However, this rod here on the Avengers anyway, the Avenger branded ones, is smooth. I'm not sure whether you can see that, but it's completely smooth. That means that if this screw here loosens up and you've got this light set up, say that way, potentially the light could slide off, okay? So that, that's the difference between mounting it on something that's smooth and then also mounting it on what I showed you earlier, which was the baby pin, which has that little step there, okay? So that even if it loosens up, the screw inside there will catch on. I'll show you. All right, so I'll tighten it up and then I'll loosen it up a little bit. But you can see it still catches on because there's a little step. Get it out. There's a little step on the actual pin itself. So don't ever mount anything on this. Always put your pin in the, uh, in the actual clamp itself and uh, mount your lights in there. Let's have a look at some of the other things that you can do with this apart from mounting lights. So um, we'll bring it back this way again. And we are going to put a, uh, let's put a reflector in there. Okay, so here I've got a flag reflector. Reflector on one side, flag on the other. And again, you'll notice that it's got a, a much, much smaller rod in there as well. So we've got the right type of hole that we can fit this in. So we're going to go on the smaller one. So we're going to loosen this up. And we go there. Okay, and that is now nice and secure. We can rotate this, we can loosen here, loosen slightly there, and I can now bring this anywhere I want. Okay, it almost works like a magic arm. If I want it back here, I can just do that, then tighten here, tighten here, and that's gonna stay there, okay? Tighten everything up and, and it will stay there. So that's not going anywhere. So it gives you all sorts of different accesses that you can move things. So really, really, uh, really, really handy. So let's get rid of this, okay? Now let me show you how to mount something that is flat. So let's say that you've got this just as a bounce guard and you wanna bounce a little light in there. So let's bring this around this way again. We'll bring it there, tighten that up. And then what we're gonna do is, so there's no rod to mount onto this, uh, onto the actual clamp itself. But there is this space here between the two biscuits. So these are referred to as biscuits. So what we can do is we can actually mount something in there as well, okay? And then you can just clamp on it. Let me turn this around so you can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So I can mount that there, and now I've got the same sort of setup as before, but with a bounce guard, okay? So you can pinch all sorts of things in there. Even a, um, a pop-up reflector will work really well. So if you pop it in there, uh, with pop-up reflectors in particular, what I do is I, um, I mount them this way. Uh, I'll show you what I do. I wish I had one here to show you, but just pretend for a second that this is a, uh, one of those pop-up reflectors. Now, the thing about the pop-up reflectors, like the five-in-ones, is that if you hold it like that, it will just flop down because they don't have a lot of strength in the frame. So that's why you've got the rod there. So you pinch it in here, okay? And now you can use this as a bounce guard, okay? So you can move this anywhere you want, okay? If you wanted to have it there, for example, and the rod itself will provide the support that you need. So really super, super versatile. Um, I'll show you one other thing actually. Um, which is the base itself. Now, this particular light stand, or this particular C stand, has what you call a turtle base. You can get different types of bases on C stands. Um, you can get ones where this leg here, 
So I showed you how all the legs fall together, but you can get ones where this particular leg here, the tallest one, will actually independently move up and down. So they'll have another knob like this one here, but it will just bring the leg up and down. And those are you really useful for when you're setting up your C-stand in uneven terrain. So let's say that there's a step in there or, um, or a rock or something, and you need to bring this, uh, this leg up a little bit. So to provide stability, you can still do that. This one here is not one of those. This is what you call a turtle base. Uh, but there are some other things that you can do with a turtle base, which is you can remove the whole pole here, okay? And you can use what's called a butt plug. Funny name, I know. Um, but uh, this is also referred to as a junior to pin uh, um, adapter. Okay, so you've got this side here is a baby pin and that's called a junior pin. And so you can attach this onto the actual stand itself. And now what you have is you've got the same type of adapter that you've got or mounting uh, pin that you've got up here in here now. So if you wanted to, you can mount a light directly onto there. And you have what is possibly the sturdiest uh, light mount that, uh, that you possibly ever see. So this is really useful if you are shooting some, um, uh, maybe some uh, white backdrop type of things where you want to illuminate the backdrop behind your subject so you can put this on the floor and uh, direct it as such. I do use this quite a bit. So if I'm shooting someone over there, for example, they'll stand in front of the light like so, and then that is illuminating the background if I want the background to go completely white. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna show you um, is this. I knew I was missing something. So let me just do this. We're going to set this up again. When I transport these, by the way, onto uh, customer sites, I will pull it apart like this. I'll, I'll take the base and, uh, and the, uh, the rod separately. It just makes it easier to transport with. They are quite heavy, uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, I find it easier to pull them apart when I'm, when I'm uh, transporting them. Uh, one limitation that you're gonna, well, there's a lot of limitations with something like this, but a really important one is that if I've got this, and I've got a light mounted onto a traditional light stand. So let me just uh, take this out. If you're shooting something like say portraits, headshots, just fashion in general, whatever, often what you would like is to have an overhead light. So if you're shooting in something like, um, like a book light, for example, or um, a butterfly light. So you have one light on the, on the, on the top, and maybe another light on the, uh, at the bottom, or maybe a reflector bouncing the light back in. Then you want that light to be straight above and in front centered onto your subject. Okay, so the problem with that, of course, is that if you do that, if I'm shooting, say, from where you are watching this right now, and I'm standing here, I've got the light up there, I can make the light go out of frame. However, the pole is not out of frame, so you can't shoot centered and you will never get the catch lights in the right spot. So this is where the, um, the C-stand also comes in very handy because what you can do is using the extension rod, and we've already talked about this, but I'm gonna show you again. Um, I'm going to set it up and show you what it would look like using the C-stand. So what I want is I want the weight to be on my front leg, the longest leg, okay? And I'm gonna go there, and then I'm going to get my pin, and I'm gonna put my pin in here. And now I'm gonna take my light from here, And we're going to place the light here.
And now what you have is the same sort of setup as before. Okay, but you'll find that the pole is not in the way now. So you can shoot directly and have the light up there, but you don't have the pole in the way. So really, really super, super handy. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. I will talk about some other things in here though, um, regarding safety, because you do need to be a little careful with um, these type of stands. You need to think uh, in, on, with a C stand, well, any, any stand really, but particularly with the C stands, any time that you're about to touch anything, any knob, you need to make sure that you're holding on to the payload, okay? You need to concentrate on what each one of these things does. A lot of the time people will try to turn these so they can rotate them, accidentally maybe undo this, and then the whole thing will come down, all right? So you need to pay attention and also watch what happens here, okay? So let me just turn this this way. If I, I'll just tighten it up again, but if I loosen this, it's not just going to fall in that direction. It's going to fall in that, it's going to rotate as well. So it, it'll rotate also, okay? So you just need to pay a lot of attention. Just concentrate when you, whenever you're using um, a C-stand, any, any stand really, but particularly with these ones. So let's um, take this off now and talk about some of the safety features I think that you need to pay attention to when you're using something like this. Um, not, not all of them, but most of the ones that I've ever worked with, in fact, all of the ones that I've ever worked with in, in, um, in professional studios, with C-stands, they're not cushioned uh, with a spring or with air, okay? So with something like this, I don't, I don't know if this one is, no, this one, this one's actually broken, but you know what I'm talking about when you have, the, oh, there you go, right? So that, it's got an air cushion on it. So it doesn't just smack down. Not with C-stands. Again, there are some that do have this system, but most of them don't. So just assume that they don't because this is, it's really heavy. C-stands are really, really heavy. They're probably, I'm gonna say that that weighs probably four times what one of these weighs. Um, so you need to be careful when you undo this, that you don't have your fingers just there and then just undo it. Always hold on to something other than the rod if you can. So the knuckle is even better if you can hold it from the knuckle and then undo it and bring it down. If that comes down on your finger, there's a good chance that it will either break your finger, it will cut it open. At the very least, it's going to be really, really painful. I've had it done and it's horrible. Um, so always be careful um, when you are undoing anything on a C-stand. The other thing, is, I mean, we've already covered the, you know, make sure that you tighten it to the right so that the weight is to the right of the knuckle. But the other thing I want to say is that you need to, I'll be right back, I'm going to get a sandbag. Okay, so let's talk about sandbags. Um, the way that you sandbag a C-stand is slightly different to the way you do a normal stand because the legs on a normal stand are all the same length. So it doesn't matter which leg you use the sandbag on, it's going to provide support but on a c stand you'll notice that all the legs are different heights and so you always have to pick the tallest leg and the reason you do that is you want the weight to be hanging off the leg so that that now is providing some really nice support if you use the smaller leg the the, the one that's close to the ground the problem with that is that none of that weight is now on the actual stand it's the bag's actually sitting on the floor. Okay, so if I pull this, okay, I shouldn't be able to do that. Okay, and um, and yes, if it does tilt, it, it, it'll pick up the weight, but by that point, it's probably ready to tip, uh, tip over. So don't ever put it on the on the small um, leg. You always put it on the taller leg. If you've got extra sandbags and you want to put them on all of them. Uh, then by all means go for your life, but if you've only got the one then it always goes on the tallest leg. The, um, the last safety thing that I want to cover is the way that you handle these. So um, if someone asks you to bring a C-stand to uh, on site and you're about to pass the stand to someone else, this is the correct way to hand it to them. You grab onto the riser which is this is called the riser this this um, pipe here 
and the extension arm. You grab the two of them together and you pass it onto like that, okay? You never ever do that because everyone on set has been trained to pick it up like that. If you have your fingers there and someone else grabs it, they're gonna squash your fingers and that is really, really painful. Your fingers can actually get caught in there and you can actually do a lot of damage. So that will be really, really painful. So you never, ever, ever hand a C-stand to someone else like that or collect it from them like that. You always grab it like that, okay? So that's the other uh, main safety feature that I think you need to uh, just sort of keep in mind. Um, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover. I don't think there's anything else. Um, the last thing I will say is that when it comes to C-stands, you get what you pay for. Um, the ones that I've used have always been the Avenger brand, which is this one here. Again, made uh, by Manfrotto. Uh, the other ones that I've used are the Matthews ones. And typically, you know, these, the ones that you find in studios are gonna be you know, 10, 15, 20 years old. This one here, I think is about 12 years old. It's been bashed around. You know what, it still works like when I first bought it. So you get what you pay for. I have seen some of the cheaper ones. I can't really speak for them, but I have seen one of them, which was like a El Cheapo sort of no name brand one, uh, where the arm, someone put an arm in there and uh, they put a heavy light on there. It wasn't a super heavy light, um, nothing out of the ordinary but maybe one of the bigger lights. And by the end of the session, that rod, it actually bent to about there. So there's a big bend in the rod. And so, um, yeah, I don't really trust the cheaper ones. I will always stick to the Avengers or the Matthews. Um, there are some uh, new ones that have come out from, uh, which I think are like from B&H and also from uh, uh, Adorama as well. Those have gotten really good reviews. So those ones I will probably trust as well. And also b &H and Adorama, they do really good quality um, studio level equipment. So I probably wouldn't have an issue trusting them. But I'd probably stay away from some of the 50 or $60 ones that you see sometimes on Amazon. I'll put some links uh, to these ones and the, and, and the ones that I like uh, in the description. So if you want to check them out, uh, you can have a look in there. Other than that, I think I've covered everything. Um, if you enjoyed this video, you found it useful. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the like button. Uh, it makes a world of difference to me and to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you wanna see more content like this, uh, by all means, please uh, click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you have any questions about anything that I covered here today, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. That is uh, the best place to get in touch with me. But if you prefer, uh, you can also get in touch with me using any of the usual social media platforms. Uh, you're going to find all the links in the description. Um, so yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I want to thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.